So today we are going to learn um, or have Ashley Ramey present Finding Your Virginia Roots at the Library of Virginia. Ashley Ramey is the Community Outreach Specialist for the Library of Virginia, where she coordinates genealogy workshop series, genealogical programs, and community outreach for the library. She graduated from the Virginia Commonwealth University with a bachelor's degree in history and a master's degree in history with a concentration on early colonial Virginia and the United States, African and indig indigenous people slavery and 19th and 20th century race, race relations in Virginia. Prior to work at the Library of Virginia, she was the site coordinator at Preservation Virginia's John Marshall House in downtown Richmond, Virginia. Ashley, we're thrilled to have you join us today. You look like you are very, very knowledgeable. So we're thrilled to have you. And I'm going to turn the program over to you. All right. Thank you, Nancy. And I want to thank everyone from the Louisville um, Genealogical Society for allowing me to present today. And please feel free to drop your questions in the chat. If I'm unable to answer them during the program, please feel free to email me. My email is on the screen and that's the best way to get in contact with me. Oh, so today I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to the Library of Virginia. The records that are available at the Library of Virginia, I'm gonna give a little taste on what Kentucky records we have and where you can find them at the library as well as the digital collections that are available on the library's website, Virginia Memory. So I'm guessing some of you have heard about the Library of Virginia, but the Library of Virginia was founded and established by the General Assembly in 1823 to care for our state's growing book collection, to preserve our colonial records and just care for any state papers. And if you've been to Richmond, we are at 800 East Broad Street in downtown Richmond. We are, if you know where our state capital is, we are directly across the street, kind of diagonally from our state capital. And we currently have over 129 million different manuscripts and printed sources in our collection. So that will include all of the governor's papers from colonial period up until present day. That's family Bibles, that's state uh, agency papers. So that's all the state agencies in Virginia. That's gonna be local and in independent city records in Virginia. Um, I will talk about that a little bit later. But we have newspapers, we have private papers, we have organization papers, we have maps, we have diaries, we have the insurance policy for Mount Vernon, we have um, Confederate money, we also hold the state's copy of the Bill of Rights. So we have a wide range of materials that can be used for genealogy research as well as historical research on Virginia and the United States. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Library of Virginia is only open Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. by appointment. Um, I can show you later where you can um, call to make a schedule appointment if you'd like to visit us. Um, and for any other information about the library, about our programs, please check out our website, which is right here at the bottom of the screen. So first, we're gonna dive into doing genealogical research at the library and the records that you can find there. So if you were able to come to the library and we were under normal circumstances and I was giving you a tour of the library, the first place I would tell you to stop is our local history and genealogy room. Um, in this room, we have bookshelves that have all of the independent cities and counties in Virginia, as well as some West Virginia and Kentucky published um, books and published materials. So this will tell you what's available in that particular county. So it would be church histories, it can be published family histories, it can be histories on that specific county, it can be a wide ranging of information. And it also can lead you to other places in the library where you can do research. So this is the best place. If you come to the library during COVID or if you come afterwards, I would advise you starting here and then moving on to the different places in the library. However, 
We also have research guides and bibliographies about a lot of different topics in our collection. So if you're interested in marriage records, if you're interested in Bible records, if you're in for, in for, um, if you're interested in knowing African-American genealogy at the Library of Virginia, newspapers, we have research guides on all different types of our collection records in our collection. And you can print them, you can read them, you can download them, you can do whatever you feel like it with them. You do not have to have a library card to access them. So these research guides will provide you with historical information as well as where you can find that information at the Library of Virginia or in our catalog. So this one is on our early marriage records. And so the collection of our records ranges from census records, court records, election records, land records, vital statistic records, organizations, so many different types of records. And all of these records can help you find your ancestors, like I said earlier, all roads lead through Virginia, in my opinion. So when you're doing these, uh, this research, all of these records will be beneficial to you to do that research. So the first record I would recommend looking at when you're doing genealogical research at the Library of Virginia is our collection of county and city court records at the library, because these records provide you basic information on investigating Virginia's past and finding out about the daily life of your ancestors. And so I would recommend looking at these. However, you I have to explain one thing about the Library of Virginia's county and city records. The Library of Virginia has a partnership with our county courts and our city courts, and they decide what records the Library of Virginia gets in our collection. So if, let's say, the city of Richmond decides they're going to give us all of their early records up until 1900, so we will take care of those records and have those records in our collection. And if those, if the city decides, okay, after a period of time, we want those records back, the city, we have to willingly give those back over to the city of Richmond. Um, we would recommend, and I would recommend coming to the Library of Virginia to look at those records first before investigating um, going to the local courthouses, because most of the time you can either find them in the original form or on microfilm at the Library of Virginia, or we can possibly find them in a database through like Ancestry or Family Search, which are available at the library um, that you can have access to. And so this um, document on the screen is a deed of emancipation from 1793. It came off of a microfilm reel at the library. And if you do come to the library and use our microfilm readers, they're fantastic. Um, you can download on them. You can um, have your flash drive plugged into them and save them. There's no charge for that service. You have free access to that. And then you can also print the, um, these documents while you're there, or you can print them at home. And this document here is from a um, project that I was working on for a gentleman and his family. From this record, we were able to figure out that his family was had been freed from the early 18th century, the late 18th century. Okay. Vital statistic records. If you're doing any type of research in Virginia, vital statistic records are the greatest source of information. However, Virginia is very unique. We started collecting um, vital statistic records in the colonial period and then up it, uh, on the colonial period. Then July, 18, 50, July 1st, 1853, the state of Virginia mandated that every birth and every death had to be recorded. So from the colonial period up until 1853, there, it might be spotty for state uh, statewide official records. Most of the time you would find those uh, that information in church records. You might be able to find it in family Bibles. You might be able to find it at the county level, but the state did not officially collect that information until 1853. However, Virginia 
decided in 1896 to repeal the 1853 law. So beginning in 1896, up until 1912, there are no official state records for births or deaths in the state of Virginia. However, if you're looking for this information, I would advise you looking at um, local county uh, records because certain counties still collected this information even though they did not have to send it to the state. Um, I would check church records. I would also check family Bibles and then also look at newspapers. Newspapers are a great, great way of collecting the information off of about people's births, about ma marriages, about deaths as well. So this um, document here on the screen is an official death certificate for um, from Virginia. It's for Charles Do uh, Delaware, Charles uh, James. Delaware Charles dated eight, uh, December 9th, 1957. So if you look at this information, you can get some valuable information in it. So you get his full name, you get his day of death, you get his um, ethnicity, you get if he was his status. And in this one, if you pay close attention, he was an infant. In Virginia, we did not have a box for the local um, coroner or the hospitals to check. So they actually typed in that this man, this child was an infant when he passed away. It gives you the date of birth. It gives you information about his birthplace, who his mother was with her maiden name, as well as the father. It gives you information about where they lived, what happened to him, why he died, and then at the bottom, always pay attention to where the, where the person or the ancestor and the individual is going. So this person is going to be buried, the date here, and then it will tell you the cemetery that they are possibly buried in and where they intended to bury this infant. And it tells you that it's located in Hampton, Virginia. It tells you the date that this, um, who was receiving it, and then the funeral home that was responsible for taking care of the body. So this is always valuable information when you're doing genealogical research. Church records. So when the state did not collect those marriages, didn't collect the births, didn't collect the deaths, church records were the best way and the possibly the one of the only ways to find out marriage, births, and deaths. So at the library, we have a guide to church records in our collection. Um, the, the churches, the denominations that we have are Baptist, Methodist, Unitarians, um, Disciples of Christ, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Roman Catholics, Jewish, Quakers, Lutheran, and German um, Reformed, and that is just naming a few. However, there is no master index to this information. So you would actually have to go into our catalog, try to figure out the church you're looking for, or look at the research guide and look for the county that we, the counties that we have for church records. And on the screen, this is St. Paul's Episcopal from York County, Virginia. And on this microfilm, this church kept the history of the church, it kept who was involved, who had, who made donations, who was kicked out of the church, as well as births, marriages, and death. And so this is a marriage acknowledgement by the church where it gives you the date of the marriage, where they got married, the groom, the bride, their status. So if they were a widow beforehand or if they were widowed, they provide that. And then they give you the residence, they give you the age, and then some of them provide you the parent's name as well as any other, other details that the church deemed necessary for their records as well as the minister. So all of this is great for genealogy research. And with the, without this kind of information, most people would not be able to find out when their ancestors were born between the years of 1896 to 18, uh, until 1912. So church records are amazing. Oh, 
as well as family Bibles. And family Bibles at the Library of Virginia are fantastic. You can access, the, access them through our catalog. And then at the end, I can show you where you can find them in our catalog. Um, additionally, we have some Kentucky records because Virginia used to be the entire United States, but at, currently we were able to give up some land to Kentucky. So we do still have some Kentucky records. However, those records are only on microfilm and the original records for Kentucky are at the Kentucky State Library and Archives. So if you have any questions about accessing those records or getting copies of those records, you would have to contact the Kentucky State um, Library and Archives. However, here's some information on the counties that began the formation of Kentucky. It began in 1777 with Finn Castle, uh, Virginia, uh, Finn Castle County, Virginia, and that being separated off and then creating three other counties as well as the Kentucky counties. And then between the years of 1784 and 19, uh, 1792, um, the counties that were formerly uh, part of Virginia got together and decided, okay, we think we can divide off from Virginia and become another state. And so in December 1879, Virginia, the General Assembly, gave permission for and a passed an act allowing for Kentucky to apply for statehood. And on July, uh, June 1st, 1792, Kentucky officially became a state. So if you're interested in learning more about specifically how this process went through, what counties were, we still have, you can learn this from our research guides as well. So the Library Virginia, like I said previously, only has this information on microfilm. And when you're looking at county, uh, county court records, we only have certain ones. We don't have all of the counties in Kentucky. We only have in Bourbon, Fayette, Jefferson, Madison, Mercer, Nelson, and Woodford. All of those are available at the library for you to use. Unfortunately, we cannot send those out to other institutions like you possibly um, used for, throughout your states or out, um, public, other public libraries. That system is called interlibrary loan. However, we cannot do that with these records. So you can um, possibly see if the Kentucky Library will send uh, microfilm copies through your state library or your state archive, or you can access them through Ancestry or um, Family Search. However, we do have some copies of those records for those particular counties. So right here are the counties and the records that we still have in our collection. And if you want any copies, if you want prints, you have to contact the Kentucky Department of Libraries and Archives. All right, my favorite part, our digital collections. So everybody can't always come to Virginia. That's not feasible, it's not possible. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, no one could travel. So prior to that, the Library of Virginia created Virginia Memory. This is where we put a lot of our digital collections spanning on different topics. So you can find exhibitions on this website, newspapers, we can find our transcription service on the uh, database on here, our blog. We have so much information that you can access through Virginia Memory without a library card. This data, all the information on this section of my presentation is stuff that you can access from home without a library card, you can print it, you can save it, you can scan it, and you can do whatever you would like with it without gaining permission from the Library of Virginia. So the first um, database digital collection that I would talk about is Virginia Chronicle. Virginia Chronicle is fantastic. This is our historic, historical newspaper database. So if you're familiar with Chronicling America, which is the Library of Congress's newspaper project, the Library of Virginia does give information to that. However, we keep some of our newspapers for ourselves. So not all of the Virginia newspapers are in Chronicling America. So I would advise starting with us 
and then moving on to Chronicle America if you still can't find the newspaper you're looking for. Um, so currently we have over 183,146 issues available, 1.3 million pages, and 183,885 articles available for you to download, to snippet, to do whatever you would like with it. So when you have access to this, you can print, you can snippet just a specific article, you can capture the full page like you see here, or you can zoom in, zoom out, and keyword search into this digital database. So this um, newspaper, our newspaper front page is from August 18th, 1920, and it states Tennessee puts over, puts off Virginia, puts off vote of suffrage as Carolina vote, uh, Carolina tables it. So this is talking about how Carolina, Tennessee, and every other state was handling the issue of women's suffrage. Um, Last year, unfortunately, um, we had a exhibition on women's suffrage, which, which was closed to the public that you could not see. However, we have a lot of digital videos, information for you to do research in um, that are available for you to use for any sort of research. Chancery records. Um, is anyone familiar with chancery records? Have you heard of them? Yes, no? If you have, please drop, drop in the chat. I see some filtering in. Yes, yes, no, I see a couple no's. So when you, when somebody's talking about chancery, you're dealing with equity. So if your ancestors were disputing over land, um, if they were disputing over a will, um, if they were just disputing over anything that couldn't be decided in a criminal or civil court, it went to chancery. So from the 18th century up until basically World War I, chancery was one of those court courtrooms that you could um, dispute your ancestors or dispute your siblings or your cousins or anyone like that. So all of the documents that are in here are chancery court cases that you can download and you can scan and do whatever you would like with them. And in this collection, we have over 11 million images of chancery causes throughout the state of Virginia that will include a lot of our counties as well as our um, independent cities. So when you access the chancery record, you will have to look at it through the county or city level. So I'd advise you to figure out, kind of have an idea of what, where your ancestor was. And then kind of I have an idea of the names. I can show you in the database in a second how you can access these court records. So this one is Findle Mulberry and Wife versus Charles Marshall, the executor, 1859. So when you pull up the chancery case, this is exactly what you'll see. You'll see the original document as well as a transcribed version. So if you are not great at reading 18th, 19th century handwriting, you don't know if that's a T or an I or if that's an F or is that double S's or double F's, we have made it uh, accessible for you to have the transcribed version that you can download, you can have access to, to do research with as well. Legislative petitions. So if you wanted to do anything in Virginia, so if you wanted a divorce, if you wanted to form a separate county, if you wanted the state to improve what was going on, so roads, bridges, you name it, you had to petition the General Assembly for that action. So on Virginia Memory, we have made our legislative petitions that we have accessible for you to look through. So if you know a specific word you're looking for, you can type it in here. You can search specific counties. So if you're looking for Franklin County, if you're looking for the city of Richmond, or if you're looking for Alexandria, you can look at here. And then if you're looking for a specific record type, you can type, uh, you can search that as well. So this is from Cumberland County. This is asking the General Assembly to form um, a Cumberland and out of Prince Edward, Buckingham, and Charlotte in 1845. And so 
it states all how they want the county to be separated. And it also states all of the individuals who are planning to move to this new county and who would be involved as, as well. So these are all upstanding gentlemen in the county. Usually it's not women. It's rare that you see um, on women on this type of record, but you do find voices of women in legislative petitions as well as Black and African Americans in legislative petitions as well. One of my favorite databases is our Virginia Untold, the African American Narrative. Um, at the Library of Virginia, we have a large amount of pre-1865 African American history and genealogical records. And we decided in 2013 to make those available to the public, to Virginia residents, as well as anyone in the United States or around the world who's interested in looking at these records. And Currently, there are over 15,000 different types of records like bills of sale, colonization records, deeds of emancipation, legislative petitions, freedom suits, um, coroner's inquests. There are thousands of thousands of different types of records to use, and there are over 2,000 over 200,000 names in this database. So this is super important for anyone that's doing any African American research that has connections to Virginia because you usually can't find the voices of African Americans or Black people in certain records up until 1870. So this will help you trace your family as well. And so in Virginia, we had a law dating in 1806 that anyone that was given their freedom or was able to purchase their freedom, they year to gather all their belongings, say goodbye to their family, collect enough money, and get out of the state. However, if you felt like you had a good enough reason to remain in the state, you had to petition the General Assembly asking and telling them why you should remain in the state. Um, these documents are super important for African Americans or any person of color looking for their ancestor because it provides you with their name, it can, can provide a wife or children, it can tell you where they were at a specific time, and then it can provide you individuals that were involved in their case and people who also stated they were of upstanding and they were not being a dredge on their county government or the state government. So these people are super, super, super um, important to help you find some more ancestors. And I see that Mary um, Connell asked about Native Americans. Um, indigenous people would be in the Virginia Untold if they were enslaved, and then they were suing for their freedom, stating that they were in a, a part of the indigenous population in Virginia. So those are in our freedom suit collection in Virginia Untold. I hope that helps, Mary. Um, so if you have any questions, con, um, concerns, if you want to find out if a record's available at the Library of Virginia, if the record's available on microfilm, if we can send it out, please feel free to contact us. Um, you can email us, you can call us. I don't think you can fax, you can't carry, send a carrier pigeon, but you can always figure out a way to get in contact with us. If you don't do it this way, you can also reach us on our social media pages. We're constantly monitoring those. So we are happy to help you with any research that you have. And so that's the end of my presentation. However, I am more than welcome to have answer questions, for as long as you need me to. So please feel free to unmute yourself and ask or drop them in the chat and I can try to answer them. Thank you, Ashley. I'm sure we're gonna have a few questions here. It takes people a few minutes to uh, formulate those questions, I think. Um, Gail Coates asked a question really early on Okay. and wondered if, um, let me read what that was about. Uh, she was referring to the album Marley. 
Chancery okay. Court records okay. online and okay. would those um, be online? All right, so I'm going to hop over now to the internet so you can see them. So hold on one second, let me pull the, up a page for you. Hold on one second. All right, so you can see- Now we can, yes, Ashley, Perfect. you're in. Okay, so this is Virginia Memory. So you would go to virginiamemory.com and then you can search for the Chancery Records through collections A to Z. And you can go down to C or you can scroll down. So I'm gonna go ahead and select C, go down to our Chancery Records. And then this is the home page. Usually we tell you which, what counties we're in the process of scanning. And then you can see what is available in the Chancery Records or what's uh, in its original format. So if we click here, scroll down to Albemarle, we have the time frame that we have is from 1768 to 1969. We have a bulk between the years of 1839 to 1850, and they are closed because they are being conserved or they're needing to some work on them prior to us scanning. So if you, I can, um, email the people that are involved in this project to find out when exactly those records are available. So if you, whoever asked that question, if you want to email me, I can um, get in contact with the people that are in charge of this database and get back to you. Okay, that was Gail Coates. So okay. excellent though. I'm impressed with this collection you just brought up. So thank you for showing us that. You're welcome. So we will, um, so these are all the counties and the cities in the state. And so you can see what is available, but then if you want to actually search the index, come on, you can pick specific counties, uh, city counties or cities you can type in the last names that were involved if you know who were the plaintiff and who was the defendant, or if you just have an idea of who was involved in the cases. If you know if any enslaved people were involved, if there were any free people involved, you can check those boxes. You can also check the box if land was involved. So that will help narrow down the information. So let me pull something up real quick. Let's see. Years. Let's do eighteen hundred. Eighteen years. So this is what we have for Culpeper County. You want to view it? Open up. So this is the court record for the court case, the Chancery case for the Culpeper eighteen dating eighteen o three. So it's something very important to know if you're looking for a case, the year that it's indexed, the index number is the end of the court case. It's not the year it began. It's the end of the court case. And then these three digits um, afterwards is where it was found in the folder when we were scanning it. So we kept track of where it, its placement in the um, folder. In the folder. Um, sadly, these are not transcribed, but you can download them. You can download specific pages or the entire um, case if you would like. So that's available to you as well. Excellent. All right, what's the next? Uh, let's see, another question somebody posted, Denise Terry, she wanted to know about the numbers listed on death certificates pertaining to cause of death, but I think a couple people gave her uh, some websites and posted it on the chat. So I hope that helped her out. Uh, another question from Denise was, do you have any uh, prison records available, state or federal? Yes, we do have um, state penitentiary um, records. You can search those through our catalog. So let me go back. So this is the main page for the library's uh, website. So it's lva.virginia.gov. And so you would want to go down under the section for the public, search the LVA catalog, and then you want to type in state, Pull that right, but it should come up this way. So, 
if you're looking for specific Virginia prison records, you have to decide if you're looking for it in the original form, the digital context in books, or um, other digital collections that we have in the library. So more than likely, you're looking for the original documents. And so we have the collection of the Virginia Penitentiary Records, dating back from 1796 up until 1970. And if you're looking for specific information in this record, I would recommend looking at our finding aid because it will provide you information on what information is restricted. So with our prison records, with the state uh, mental um, institution, some information is closed and not accessible for the general public unless you're a um, person of contact or kin and you provide that information for the library to verify. Um, so we also provide information on what's in here. So there are account books, we have the board minutes, we have rules and regulations, we have and, uh, register indexes and medical registers, we have medical information, death, fiscals, and we have the in, uh, inmate index cards. So we have a ton of information that is accessible in them. And then we will go into where you can find them. Um, a lot of these records might be either at the library or they're at our off, um, off-site record center that's not too far to the library, but we would have them brought to the library in advance. So um, if you have any questions about accessing specifically the penitentiary records or any large record group, I would advise emailing in advance to make sure that box or that record is available at the library. And if it's not, we can have it brought to the library from our state record center. So I hope that helps. Good. Um, let me go to another question here by okay. Donna. Okay. And I'm going to read it to you. Most of my research is in Appomattox and Buckingham counties. Any idea on what might exist for those burned out counties? Yes. She's wondering about wills and land court records, maybe, or Revolutionary War records. Okay, so if you are looking for the information on what is available on microfilm, you can check that out by going to our Google search bar on the top of our website and type in county and city records on microfilm. And I'll pull up a search page like this, and you want to go to this first result and then it's going to tell you how we arrange our microfilm, but then we have all the counties and then all the independent cities at the end. And did she say it was Appomattox? Yes. Okay. That so, was one of them. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. Appomattox is one of our burned counties. So a lot of our Appomattox records were destroyed during the um, Civil War or um, they were destroyed by fire. So when you're dealing with certain counties in Virginia, either through warfare, battle, destroyed by um, natural causes, some of those records do not survive. So particularly for Appomattox, a lot of the records between um, were destroyed except land, uh, land tax books um, in 1892. So those are the only records that are available on microfilm. There might be some information available in original format, but don't give up hope yet. Move this out of my way. Let's go to our homepage. Go back to Virginia Memory. And you're going to go to our digital collections. Go down to collections A to Z. Go over to the L's and go to our Lost Records Locality Digital Collection. So when we were looking at our chancery cases, we would find information for different counties all over the places and counties that were burned or a lot of those records do not survive. So if you have a family that you're looking for or a name, you can look for it um, as well in this database. And then if you're looking specifically for wills, and we can see Appomattox and see what we have. I'll take a second. Unfortunately, we don't have that much, 
but we do have a couple of things. So I would recommend looking at this database to see what survives. And unfortunately, if it was destroyed by a fire or war or if um, any other natural resources, more than likely it doesn't exist. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so those doggone burn counties. One of those burn counties. So I would look here and then I would also, do you, does she have a specific time period that she's looking for? Do you know if she knows? She, she, um, she said supposedly a Revolutionary War ancestor has a will, but I have no idea where it would be if the courthouses were burned. Anything online that I should look at before visiting you? I'm currently in pre-1800 tax list on Family Search. Okay. And by the way, a great presentation. So. Thank you. So, <laughs> so I would tell you to look at these other counties for pre-1800 records because Appomattox was formed in 1845. Buckingham, Prince Edward, Charlotte, Campbell, all of these other counties might have that information in them. So I would look there as well. So hopefully none of these counties are burned. I don't think these counties are burned. Buckingham. Buckingham. There is some loss. Oh, you're in some of those oh, burned counties. I hope, I wish you weren't in some of those burned counties, but um, some of those uh, information might be available. So, and also would check Albemarle County as well. So hopefully something might be there. Backtrack those counties, right? Backtrack the counties. Uh, another question here from uh, Lois Schneider, and it's one I would have for counties that ultimately became part of West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Are the records segregated? In other words, do they separate at 1863 and you have to look on West Virginia or what records would Virginia still have on that area or that okay. state of West Virginia? Okay, so just like the Kentucky information, we just have information in um, microfilm. So you would still have to go to the original count um, to the West Virginia State Library and Archive. We have some county records. We have some land office uh, patents and grants, land records and personal property, legislative petitions, vital statistics, and all of that information. We have this all here for you to find. So if you're wanting to know where that is, so go back to the homepage, go up to our Google search bar and type in West Virginia records. And it should be the first result, and it, you can pull it up here. So, oh, excellent. So, all of this is available for you to search through, and then I can give you some more information. And there are research guides that can provide you how to search through this and figure out if those records, um, how to search the remains, and get some explanation out of them. Um, I just want to tell all the participants here today that. Um, You've been granted permission to unmute yourself. So if you would like to unmute and ask Ashley a question, uh, feel free to do that right now. Let's see if anybody has. Meanwhile, here's a question from Angie Crabtree. I have an uncle who was an MIA during World War II. Okay. Where can I research for free to find information on his military records? All right, we might also have that as well. So in our Google search bar, you're gonna to go to Virginia's military dead database. Ah. Can't type today. So you wanna go right there. So this database provides information on a lot of Virginians that were involved in any skirmishes, wars overseas or in the United States. So we have research guides here for that information. And she said World War II or World yes. War II. Okay, so we have a specific research guide that discuss, uh, has the records. Here's some records. These are all the records what we have pertaining to uh, World War II veterans that died overseas or um, died when they came back home. But then you can search 
the database. So if you have the last name, do you have the counties, you have you can know the conflict. If you have a date, if you have an idea about the place of death, you have the gender, you have the race, and then you know the branch of service, you can put that all in and you can find the information. So let me do this, see what we can come up with. Search. So we have for uh, the last name of Charles, we have the, these records available to you. So you can click and this is the information that you would find. So you give you the last residence, the company, it would give you his rank, where if he was killed in action, the place, and then the sources. Um, also in Virginia, we had uh, a commission called the War History Commission for World War I and World War II. So we would send out commissions throughout the state for loved ones, or if the person did um, come back, they would fill out these questionnaires. Let me pull it up. They would fill out these questionnaires and um, send them back to the state. You could include pictures, you could, um, you could, the pictures are great. We have tons of pictures for this collection. And so let me pull this up. So the questionnaires would look like this. And so you would put your full name, date of birth, uh, the, a, the, the date of your birth, where you were born. Um, you would put your mother's maiden name, if you got an education, if you had children, if you were in a fraternal order. And then you can go, it's multiple pages. And then it would provide also if you, what you were involved in while you were overseas. It would tell you if you had, um, if you were injured, if there's information on any medals you received, all of that information would be available in these questionnaires if the family members filled it out or the service member filled it out and sent it back to the state. Um, the National Archive is a great place to look and then the database full three is great, a great resource for military um, records. And um, Fold3, we have access at the Library of Virginia of that database, so you can look there. And I would say check your local public library or your state library or your university, and sometimes they will have access to those databases as well. Excellent. Let's see, another question here from Natalie McLean. Can I find Guardian? ship records from 1770s in Mecklenburg County. How would she do that? Oh, let's see. I would look at our county records and see what Mecklenburg has. And what was the date again? 1770s. 1770s. Yeah. Oh. I would look at some county records. Um, do you have, for this early period for like guardianships and adoptions and things like that, that information wasn't always recorded. Families usually just absorbed those family members or neighbors or something like that. So if you provide me, Natalie, if you provide me some more information, I can do some digging on my end that I can see if I can find that information specifically out for you. Okay. Anybody else out there have any questions? I, I like do wanna, questions. Yeah, I do wanna let everybody know that we have recorded Ashley's presentation and it will in a day or two be posted on our website, which is www.kylgs or just Google the Louisville Genealogical Society. We also, that's for our members, but if you're not a member of our society, and we encourage you to join if you go to our homepage of our website, but if you're not a member, you can go to YouTube and search for the Louisville Genealogical Society, and it will be posted in our uh, society page there. So uh, this great presentation you can re-watch, which I'm certainly going to do. 
I see um, someone asked about federal records. So federal records, we do have some federal records at the Library of Virginia, but we are not the official um, institution that has all the federal records for um, the state of Virginia. You would need to go to the University of Virginia's um, library to look for that information. And then I would advise going to the National Archives as well. And then if you're looking for any marriage, birth, death information, you can look on our county microfilm. I would also advise looking for church records. I would look for family Bibles as well. So we, in our family, uh, to find our family Bible collection, you would go to our catalog, type in the, um, the family you're looking for, and then type in family Bible. Two, two. And we have over 6,800 family Bibles available in our collection. And we always are accepting donations. Um, we do not keep the family Bible. We just scan the couple of front pages or the back pages. And then we provide, the, we give the Bible right back to the family. Um, so you can click on the Bible that you're looking for. And then we also provide... A scanned copy of it. I hope you can see this. So let's zoom in. So you can see that this is the family Bible. It's dating back to 1774, who the owner was. It gives you what kind of Bible it was. And then if you go exit out of this, you can download them. Let me see if I can find a better version. So oh. here is a family, a copy of a family Bible. So we got the front page of the Bible, and then we have all of the entries. So this one is only three pages, but we have all of this available for you to download, print, do whatever you like without a library. Searching a catalog, you do not need a library card unless you're requesting something or you're coming into the library to look at something in its original format. Ashley, this brings up a question. You said we could donate that Bible to you and you would digitize it. Can we send you a digital copy of these pages, the front of the Bible and the pages? I would have to check with our private papers archivist to find out if they accept digital copies. But okay. whoever asked that question, please send me an email and I can put you in contact with a private papers archivist who deals with accepting donations. But we are always looking for donations. Don't give it to anybody else. We're the best institution for all that information pertaining to Virginia. Give it to us, not some other institution. Give it to us. We're the best. Definitely. We're the that's a question a lot of people ask. What do I do with my research or, or uh, family archival material? So, yes, contact you and find out how we can get it to you, right? Yes, we are always looking for that information and we do have some published family charts we have well we have families that donated gigantic full page full table links of charts they're ornate they're beautiful we have some of those scanned and um, put up in our library and then we are happy to care for that information once it's in our collection we can never get rid of it nothing ever can actually happen to it once you donate it to the Library of Virginia. It is always taken care of from the time you give it to us until I hopefully nothing ever happens to the library. So we will always okay. take care of that. So if we have copies of family books that we produce privately, um, mm -hmm. can we send those to you? If they pertain to a Virginia County or a Virginia family, okay. more than likely you, I can put you in contact with the person that's in charge of that section in the library and they can get in contact with you and accept, uh, or don accept the donation. Super, super. Okay. And so that information, if it's like a public book, would go into our um, local history and genealogy room. Uh, okay, anybody else have any kind of questions for Ashley? Well, if not, thank you so much, Ashley, for this great presentation. We're thrilled you were able to join us from the 
uh, Virginia State Library, the great state of Virginia, as you've been telling us. Yes. Uh, your presentation was recorded. It will be posted on our website and on our YouTube um, collection. So thank you very much. Every, I counted up. We had over 25 states represented today, Ashley. So over half the United States was here today. Yay. Hello of to course. all of my different states are not from Virginia. Hello. Yes, yes. And I'm sure they're all planning their trips to the Library of Virginia whenever you pull up those uh, restrictions. Please. Ashley did say it is open, but only on appointment. So if you're making a trip to Richmond, get on the phone and call Ashley and make an appointment. Yes. I you might can, be considering that. <laughs> so I can, uh, let me give you the number to call for the um, appointments. Hold on. The number is 804-692-3800. So that's the appointment line for setting up an appointment. Okay. And just to let you know, there's parking under our building. 